Hello and welcome to the winter 2014-2015 sort of season preview, which I'm gonna call it, that I do every single season. Um, yeah. So, sorry, this is a little late, uh, you know, with holidays and various other shit that nobody really cares about. This didn't get out very quickly, but, you know, I'm getting it out now, so I guess no big deal. Or maybe a big deal, I don't know. Um, also, I apologize ahead of time if maybe it's a hard to hear me at points. I am recording this right after waking up, which I really should not do, but I'm doing it anyways because I'm dumb. So, with those out of the way, oh wait, I gotta do my usual disclaimer. Keep in mind that these are just my impressions based on, most, for the most part, I know a little bit more about some shows out of mere you know, coincidence. But most of these shows I'm going purely off the synopsis and the promo art, and a lot of the time it can be misleading, so I have been wrong about some of my impressions before, some shows I thought would be shit turned out to be great, and some shows I thought would be great turned out to be shit. So keep in mind that the, that is just what this is, mere predictions. Practically palm reading status of stuff. I was about to add that sometimes I'm usually right, but I don't even know if I can back that up as statistics because I don't really keep track. <laughs> so. This is just, just, the whole point of this is just to, like, give you an idea of what shows you might want to watch, and then primarily what shows I'm probably going to watch. So, keep that in mind. I'm not, like, reviewing these shows before I've even seen them. Um, but that out of the way, let's get right into it. Because I want to try and get this done quickly, but I say that every fucking time, and it always ends up taking two hours. But, hey. So, first show is Tende Opera Milky Homes TD, which is a sequel to the Futari Wawa Milky Homes TV series. I don't even know which season this is. There's so many Milky Homes shows. And then there's, like, spinoffs and shit. I don't even know if this is, like, a fourth season of, like, the main series or, like, a third season of the spinoff series. I don't even know. Point is, if you like Milky Homes... And there's a decent amount of people that do, but, like, there are people that really like the main series, and then there's, like, a spin-off thing that people don't like or something. I don't know, I'm very confused, because there's so many fucking seasons. Um, if you want more Milky Homes, then maybe this is for you? I don't know. Um, congratulations, I, I guess, I don't know. Moving on, we have Absolute Duo. The story begins with Blaze, a weapon that is a manifestation of a human soul. Toro Kokonoe happens to be qualified for this, but for some reason his blaze is not a weapon, but a shield. Moreover, he enrolled in a school that teaches combat skills, and thanks to the school's duo partner system, he ends up living with a beautiful silver-haired girl named Yuri Sigtuna? Sigtuna. A reference to the Sweden town Sigtuna. Why did I need to know this? A study abroad student from Gimli, or Gimli? I don't know how you do that for nothing. A location in Norse mythology within the Nordic countries. I guess it's a reference to where they they were or, or are or something. I don't know. I don't see the point of it outside of that. Um, interestingly, this is based off a light novel, which I guess isn't that interesting, but I thought when I first found out about the show that I was based off a visual novel, so I guess that's an interesting twist or, or something, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> this, this seems like a basic show where a guy ends up in a thing and then a bunch of girls want his dick. Um, I could be wrong. There, there's a couple hints in here that there's more to it, like how his his thing isn't a weapon, it's a shield, and then, like, these girls, well, actually, I don't think the girls being based in anywhere specific really matters. <laughs> sometimes, because sometimes those details matter in certain shows that turn out to be more than just dumb harem crap, but then a lot of shows will, like, give this information and then be like, well, dumb harem crap time, you know, so you, you never know. But... Actually, the first episode's already out, so I'm kind of cheating a bit, and I've heard that there's nothing really all that special. But, of course, it could just be a boring first episode. It could get better. But I've heard not-so-great things about the first episode, so it's probably going to be dumb harem crap. So, there's that. Moving on, we have Mina Etsumori and Falcom Gakuen SC, sequel to the whatever the hell this is. I don't even know what the show is. I didn't even know it had a first season. <laughs> if you knew it had a first season and you watched the first season, here's your second season. Congratulations. Um, I don't know what this is. Maybe you should tell me what this is. I don't know anyone who's seen this show. Maybe this, maybe this is a show that aired like five years ago and is finally getting a sequel or something. I have no idea. I just read like the first sentence in, of the synopsis and it says something about being invaded by game developer Neon Falcom's RPGs characters. That actually sounds kind of hilarious and amazing. 
I feel like it'd be a show I'd like if I actually played most of those games. I played the Yis series, which I'm I'm just pronouncing as Yis. I don't even if that's actually how it's pronounced. Um, and I like those a lot, but I haven't played the others. So I feel like I'd like it more if I played those games, because then I'd be like, oh, it's probably full of references and stuff. So if you've played those games, maybe you should check out this series. It might be pretty cool. If not, then maybe you should just ignore it. I don't know. Moving on, we have Diomager D. The story centers around Daijiro Kyogoku, the 15th generation owner of the Kyoto Sweet Shop Amash Amashoto. One day, Daijiro, da Daijiro discovers a giant robot named Daimager D in his store's basement. At the same time, enemies called Mekaiju, a combination of the words Mecha and Kaiju or Monster, appear in Kyoto and begin wreaking havoc. So, it's like, I don't know, Power Rangers, but like one dude instead, and it's like a weekly Monster Pie show? I don't know. Like... You can do it really well. Like, I enjoyed the fuck out of Star Driver, and that used the weekly monster fight to its uh, to its benefit, although it wasn't really monsters they were fighting each week. So that was part of it. But this just seems like, oh, whatever. And if the show's art is like this promo art, that's not very visually appealing. But that's just me. So, I don't know. Maybe the animation's actually quite good. Or it could be like Dai Shogun a couple weeks, uh, weeks, a couple seasons ago, where it was like no animation at all. It was kind of hilarious, actually. Um, I don't know. It, it doesn't seem very appealing to me. It's probably just a regular weekly monster fight show. I don't even know if this is going to get simulcasted. It looks like one of those shows that just never gets simulcasted. Not to, it doesn't help that I've never heard of ILCA as an animation studio. They've probably done things before, probably just as low-key as this, though. So that's probably why. Um... So even if I wanted to watch this, I probably, probably no one's, not not even fan translators would pick this up, let alone simulcasts. So hey, I probably couldn't watch it even if I wanted to. If, if I'm wrong and someone is, it's, it's getting translated somewhere and people are saying good things about it, I'll pick it up, I guess. But it, do, it doesn't seem like it's anything special just based off this. Moving on, we have Yurakuma Arashi. The intellectual fantasy follows the... We're not, wow, it actually said intellectual fantasy. The intellectual fantasy follows Kuraha, a transparent high school girl who is plain and is barely noticed by others. Seemingly every night, she has a dream about a bear and a transparent storm. In this dream, her mysterious classmate, Giri, Ginko Yurishiro, arrive, appears in the form of a bear. So, based off that synopsis, you might think it's kind of fucking weird. And you'd be completely right. Because, if you don't already know, this is being directed by one Ikuhara. I Ikuhara, God, I can always mispronounce everything, um, who is famous for directing Revolutionary Girl Otena and more recently Mauro Pangandrum. So a lot of people are going to pick up the show purely off of that. Um, it's not surprising because he usually puts out interesting shows whether you like them or not, they tend to be interesting. Um, but what's interesting, or I can keep saying interesting, what's different about this show is that the other shows usually were just kind of like out of nowhere weird shows, whereas this one's, a lot of the promo art is like just cutesy girls and panty shots and like that kind of stuff, which is weird. And it's hard to sell, tell if it's misleading to get people to watch the show and then it's nothing like that, or if maybe Gar just lost his fucking mind after doing all those weird shows <laughs> and he's just doing more, something more straightforward and bantering this time. Who knows? I don't know. Um, interestingly, a f little fun, or I'm not sure if I should say fun, it just, just the fan, the, the common translation people used for the title. Uh, when they were talking about it, I mean, the first episodes are, like, today. I haven't watched it yet. Um, people were translating tra words. This is why I don't record things in the morning. Um, people were translating it to lesbian bears, um, which kind of makes sense. You know, Yuri, Kuma, lesbian bears. I don't remember what Arashi stands for, but it was mainly lesbian bears. And I was like, oh, that's kind of cute and funny. And then I saw some of the promo art, and I was like, oh... They aren't kidding. <laughs> you see the promo art and you think lesbian bears might actually be a pretty fucking accurate translation. <laughs> Jesus. I know we all like the symbolism, but holy Christ. Jesus. Um. So, yeah. 
Basically, the show's fucking weird being directed by Ukuhara. If you want something different, watch it, although it might not end up being different. Maybe he just lost his mind and he's gonna direct something straightforward pandering this time. Who knows? I don't know. Nobody knows. So, hey. Next we have Kamisama Hajimashita. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. I just said it really quickly. <laughs> Sequel to the Kamisama, Kamisama Kiss, I believe they translated to or some shit. Something like, how does that, whatever. I think, didn't, isn't it correct? Didn't Funimation translate it to Kamisama Kiss or something like that? I don't know, whatever. Point is first season aired like a year ago? Or wait, it was not two years ago. It aired in like the first, no. Did it air the same season as Tonari no Kaibutsukun? I don't think so. I think that was like a year or two out, or like a couple seasons after that. I don't remember. Whatever, my memory's shit. Point is, if you've seen the first season, you're getting a second season. And I don't know uh, how popular it was in Japan, but Funimation was saying how it was surprisingly popular off of their simulcast, which is why they did like the fucking like Princess Edition release, which was like over $100, but included a bunch of bonus shit, which they took a risk on doing because the view numbers for the show were really high. So. Apparently quite a few people like this show, so congratulations, here's your second season. More of this shoujo stuff. You, you can tell it's shoujo, it's not too surprising. Um, yeah. Moving on, we have Benan Koku Chikyu Boy Bulov. Nice name. In the story, the high school Earth Defense Club is basically the Do Nothing Club. Club members N and, his name is N, and Atsushi, Atsushi? are soaking in the bathtub at a public bath when suddenly a mysterious pink creature, Wombat, appears out of thin air and asks, I want to save this star. Please would you lend me your power? Then Yumoto, whose family runs the bathhouse, appears and chases and chases the Wombat to give him a hug. What? In school the next day, they're... God damn it, screensaver. <laughs> I'm not even gonna cut that out. I'm not even gonna cut out that my screensaver just fucked me over right there. Then Yumoto, whose family runs the bathhouse, appears and chases Wombat to give him a hug. I already read that. In school the next day, the remaining two members, Io and Ryu, also meet Wombat. I like how his name is just Wombat. Wombat gives all five of them bracelets and tells them to protect Earth. A dazzling light comes from the bracelets and envelops their bodies. So, basically, this is Magical Boys, the show. So, it's pretty much anime of the season. So, you know. Um, I, I don't know what, I, I feel like you could just tell based off the tone, they're, they're, they're in a public bath, and then a wombat appears and asks them to save the planet, and then they're like, I gotta hug this thing. You could tell the tone of the series isn't entirely serious. And it's a bunch of boys transforming into magical, would they be transforming into magical girls, or would you say they're transforming into magical boys? Because magical girls isn't even necessarily a girls thing, it's just like a title nowadays, because it's like a thing in anime to be a magical girl. But it's such a thing at this point that you don't even really need to be a girl. You can be a boy and transform into a magical girl because it's like the concept, it's not necessarily the gender associated with it. Whatever, the point is, it's magical boys, the fucking show, and it's probably gonna be amazing and hilarious and I'm gonna love it because I love kind of the shit like this because it doesn't take itself seriously and it's fucking crazy and it's lots of fun. So everyone should watch Magical Boyfriends, the show. Next we have Miritari, which is, that didn't come through my microphone. I was just fixing something so that I could, you know, not have my uh, screensaver fuck me over. Uh, next we have Miritari. Their studio name is Creators in Pack. The hell is that? I don't remember. The story takes place during a conflict between the Krakosia dukedom and the Grania, Grania Republic. In the midst of the fighting, a savior appears to the Kakosia dukedom, and it is a high school student named Sohei Yano. Two female soldiers, First Lieutenant Rudo and Second Lieutenant Haruka, appear in tanks to intrude on Sohei's everyday life, followed by the enemy soldier, Shachirofu, all of whom use firearms without hesitation at his house. That is... This is definitely a comedy. Um... I might watch this. It seems wacky enough to be fun, so that could be entertaining, but it also seems like it might be really bad, but if it's really bad, I could just drop it, so I guess it's not too big a deal. Um, I think mainly I'm just hoping that it actually gets picked up. I mean, if this doesn't get picked up by Crunchyroll, I probably won't bother with it because, you know, fan translations usually are too much of a pain to keep up with unless they're actually on time, which a lot of the time they aren't. 
So it's usually just too much of a pain to remember that the show exists if you don't, you know, just have it on Crunchyroll right there. So, um, I don't know. If, if, if it's picked up at Crunchyroll, it'll be really easy to keep up with, and then I'll watch it, and then if not, I probably won't bother. I'll probably forget it exists. You know what? I'm probably gonna forget this exists by the time I'm even done with this chart. So then, the only way I'll remember, period, is if it gets picked up at Crunchyroll. So, there you go. Um, moving on, we have Kentai Collection Ken Cole. I don't even know if I need to read the synopsis because everyone in the universe knows about this. But I'm gonna do it anyways. Humanity has lost control of the seas. The threat that has taken over the seas is the deep sea fleet. The only ones who can counter this threat are Kan Musume, warship girls, girls who possess the spirit of naval vessels. The base for the fleet arrayed against the deep sea fleet is Chinjufu. There, many various Kan Musume have gathered to live together and work hard every day in training and other matters. One day, a Kan Musume arrives at Chinjufu. She is a special class of destroyer. Her name is Fubuki. Fubuki's story, as well as the Kan Musume story, begins now. So, I don't know if I want to watch this. Because, I mean, if you somehow have been living under a rock or something, Kanko is basically the next hottest thing in otaku fandom in Japan. It basically completely... What's the word I'm looking for? Demolished Toho, as far as popularity goes, um, in, in just Comic Cat alone. Like, it tripled, quadrupled the amount of, like, booths that Toho got. Like, it's absurd how ridiculously popular Kanko got so quickly. So basically, all you really need to do to become super popular in Japan is to just make a series based on introducing lots of cute girls all the fucking time. <laughs> Basically. Apparently that's the trick. So, anyways, um, I don't know if I want to watch this though. Because it's one of those things where it's like, I kind of want to watch it to like, maybe catch on to, I mean, I'm pretty sure I know why Otaku liked the fucking series. So it's not that surprising, but it's like, I, I kind of want to jump in on the party and be like, yeah, this is fun. But on the other hand, I, it's one of those things where it's like, I don't, maybe I don't want to be a part of this. Maybe I don't want to, you know, go along with this whole thing or give a shit, you know, and maybe it's dumb. Cause that's the thing. This could be like, it's so popular. We have the freedom to do whatever and it'll probably succeed. Or it could just be like, well, there's a lot of people who like the series. Let's just pander to them like crazy and then we'll get a lot of money. <laughs> so, I have no idea which it'll be. I just, I, I don't know. It's, I'm probably not gonna bother with it. It's, you know, if I really care, I can just stick with the doujinshi, you know? That, there's there's plenty of can't call shit like that around, so I can just live with that. <laughs> I'm okay with that. If people are talking about it and it turns out to be the next greatest thing, then hey. Maybe I'll give it a go, but for now, I just, I just don't, I, I don't want to bother. I don't care enough, you know, it, it's, 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 it's one of those things where it's so big, it's intimidating, where if it's like, it's so big, it's like, I don't understand how it got this big. I, I don't get it. And then I'm just going to be watching the show trying to understand and I won't get it. Well, actually I do get it, but I don't want to get it. You know, it's, that's not enough for me. Cute girls are great, but, you know, I, I, I want a bit more out of my cartoons than that. <sighs> Anyways, I spent enough time on Kenko. Moving on, we have Shinmai Mao No Testament. The rather risque battle action story centers around Basara Tojo, a first year high school student who is flustered by a sudden question by his eccentric father. Hey, didn't you used to say you wanted a little sister? Plus, his father announces that he is getting remarried. His father brings over two beautiful stepsisters, but then embarks on an overseas trip. However, the two sisters, Mio and Maria Naruse, are actually a novice devil and a succubus. I don't even know why this is an anime. This is, like, fucking custom-built for Dujinchi, so... <laughs> I'm sure people will oblige regardless, but... It's like, why is this even a show? This is basically, this is gonna be, you, you, it's probably gonna be pretty much borderline porn. And you're just gonna be like, well... Why isn't it just full-blown porn? Why am I wasting my time? So, you know, maybe you don't know. Um, the only thing that's like stopping me is the fact that it's based off a light novel because 
sometimes the misleading thing, the synopses like these turn out to be not the case because you don't really, it's harder to do, not that it's impossible, it's certainly been done before, it's harder to do fan service -y type things like this in light novels because of how, how much text it is. And there's only like six to eight pictures per, per volume. It's much easier to do this in a manga where you can be all visual about it and be like, look, it's her panties and look, it's her boobs and stuff like that. So, I mean, I guess they could just save those specific scenes for the uh, for the artist illustration parts in the light novel. But I don't know, like maybe it's actually kind of good. I don't know. Fuck if I know. <laughs> I don't know. The, so I'm conflicted. I kind of want to pick it up and then if it's bad, I'll just drop it. But on the other hand, I don't even bother picking it up and I'll just listen to hear if it's good or not. I think I know some people that are picking this up regardless, so maybe I'll just wait and hear from them if it's any good or not. I guess that's what I'll do. So, that's what I'll do. I'll just listen uh, and keep my ear out. If it's good, I'll pick it up. If not, then whatever. Moving on, we have... I'm not even gonna pronounce that title, because this is a sequel to a thing that aired a while ago, and I remember that promo art. They didn't even change the promo art for the second season, although that could just be the chart makers just using the same promo art. I don't know. Um... If you watched this, which you probably didn't, because I don't think anyone knows what the fuck this thing is, then here you go. <laughs> if you didn't watch this, which I don't think anyone did, then you don't have to watch this, and it's like a free space on the chart. Hooray! Moving on, we have Punky's to Jigen. The anime story takes place at the school for the Spirits of Sound, St. Muse, Acad Muse Academy. The students at the academy train to one day control and tune the sounds of the world so that humans can live comfortably with sound. Five students at the school who are failing are given a special mission. So, based on the promo art, it looks kind of like a kid show kind of thing, which is, you know, not that big a deal. You can have well-written kid shows, but I don't think it's going to get picked up. It, it's, it's like a common occurrence. Whenever shows have, like, kid show style art they are very 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 infrequently picked up by uh you know anyone really <laughs> i guess the one thing that's interesting is that it's being done by dle who are known for their flash shorts they do like how long are their flash shorts usually like four or five minutes they're not very long uh and they're done in flash i don't know if they've ever i don't know if they've upgraded since i last watched them but that's usually what they do um so, if it's more of that, then I guess, cool, I'll pick it up if anyone picks this up. You know, just check it out, because it'll be a nice short show. Um, I could be wrong, maybe they're doing a full-blown show for once, fuck if I know. Um, if not, then I probably just won't bother with it, because I doubt anyone's, I, I seriously doubt anyone's gonna pick this up. But, I could be pleasantly surprised, or not pleasantly surprised, I don't know if it's gonna be any good. Moving on, we have Tokyo Ghoul Rude, sequel to the Tokyo Ghoul TV series which is excellent. I've already said, well, I didn't say my thoughts on the entire series technically. Well, I guess, no. I didn't say my entire thoughts on the series literally, but I did technically uh, in my Tokyo Ghoul ending is not bad video, um, which everyone should have watched because I don't know. <laughs> I was going to say something that was like, kind of like that was, that was egotistical, but at the same time self-aware. So it was like making fun of myself. But then, like, everything just kind of fell apart in my brain because I'm still waking up, so it just didn't work. Anyways, point is, first season was great. Second season will probably be great, too. The only thing that worries me is that they're saying how it's more... Well, I guess this is a good thing for most people. It's more an anime original story than it is following the manga because apparently the... We don't know for certain because they're still being vague about it. The, apparently the manga author is writing the scenario for this season and it's going to apparently diverge from the manga because it's being credited as, he's being credited as story concept or, or story or something for this season. So he's apparently doing something for it. Honestly, what I think he might be doing is just maybe he didn't like a couple parts that he did in the second half of his manga and so he's just correcting them for the anime version. Um, but for all I know, he could be taking a wildly different path, so who knows? Um, either way, it probably won't be too big a deal, because the same director from the first season's on board, which is great, because holy shit, did that... I was gonna say last episode, but also the first episode was good too. The first and last episode shows that, holy fuck, he's a good director. I would say his name right now, but I forgot it. <laughs> I checked before starting this so that I would know it, but by the time I got to this, I had already forgotten it. I'm terrible at remembering names. Anyways, the point is, director is really, really good. The guy I gotta keep my eye on from now on. 
Um, he doesn't direct too much, so I guess it won't be too hard. Uh, but it was pretty fucking great. So I'm hoping the second season will be just as good. Um, I was going to add something onto that. Something about how maybe manga main manga readers won't be as annoying this season because it's more anime original this time. I'm sorry, manga readers. I don't know if any people watching this video were any of those types of readers because there were there were manga readers who were perfectly good and fine too. But there were so many manga readers that were like, "It's different. Fuck this show," and like wouldn't grade it on its own merit, which was really annoying because they wouldn't shut the fuck up. Like, if they just said it in their own little bubble, that'd be fine. Like, that's just how they do. But they would not stop going to people and saying how shit it was because it didn't follow the manga and how it, like, cut things out. And it was so fucking annoying. It's one of those things where, like, people try so hard to convince you that it's bad because the original source material was so much better. But instead, they come off as so fucking annoying, you just want them to go away and you don't care anymore. And you're just gonna believe the opposite of what they say because they annoy you so much. Why did I go off on this rant? I don't know. Point is, maybe they won't get as much of that this season because it's more anime original, supposedly. Maybe it won't be. I don't know. Part of me hopes it will, so that I won't have to listen to any of that. I mean, I'm fairly safe if I just stay on Twitter, but sometimes it comes through and it's, you know, whatever. Anyways, too much time spent on this. Moving on. We're on Sanai Heroin no Soda Tikata which I remembered the title of before this started, but it was long, and so I already forgot it. The story revolves around Tomoya Aki, an otaku who is working part-time to earn money enough money to buy anime on Blu-ray. It's the struggle. He meets a beautiful girl on his way home during spring vacation and eventually models the heroine of his own doujin game after her. However, he finds out a month later that the girl is in fact his classmate, and he doesn't know her name. He learns that the girl named Megumi actually is hardly noticed by others. Tomoya... I just realized his name is Tomoya. Wow. Interesting. Also has no artistic ability or writing skills, so he asks Ace of the Art Club, Ariri? Er, 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 the two R's? Er, yeah, Ariri Spencer Saw. Wait. Ariri er, Spencer Sawamura. What a fucking name that is. To provide the art, as well as the honor student Utaha Kasumi Gauka. Holy fuck. To write the scenario. Can they produce a decent game for comic market? So you would think, based on this, and their extremely short skirts, that this is going to be a very dumb show with a lot of pandering and fan service. And you very well might be right. But here's the kicker. This is airing on Noitamin A. You know, that 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 block where Silver Spoon and Nanana's Buried Treasure recently aired, and Shigatsu is currently airing. The musical one, I don't remember the full title. Shigatsu Walk no Kimi Uso? Something like that. So, here's the thing. I mean, Lodomini ain't perfect. <laughs> they had Guilty Crown and Black Rock Shooter, okay? So, they're not perfect. But, very, very, very frequently, Noitamine, at the very least, has shows that are excellent when it comes to characters. The character writing tends to be very good. Again, exceptions. And this could be one of those exceptions. But, it's it's been solid enough times that I'm willing to give it the shot. It, a Noitame show is basically an instant pickup. If it turns out to be shit, well, that's unfortunate and you can just drop it, but Noitame shows just tend to have such good character writing that you gotta give it a go. So even given, you know, all of this synopsis, I, I gotta give it a go because maybe the character writing is actually excellent. It's one of those things where it's like, you know, everything about it makes it seem like it's stupid and then you pick it up and it's like, wow, this is actually really good. You know, maybe it was intentionally misleading, maybe it wasn't, I don't know. But if it's airing on Noitame, I gotta at least give it a shot. And I really do hope the character writing is as good as usual Noitame shows, because that would be great. <laughs> I'd love it. But uh, we'll see how that turns out. 